In this video, we're going to focus on giving these segments an independent color depending on a certain value as a condition. So let's start to look how to do this. So let's start to look how to change the color of the line segment in Chart.js. So the first thing that we need to do is here, we need to get the boiler template. And this here is from the boiler template here on Chart.js3.com getting started. This link, you can find as well in the description box. Once you're on here, just copy this chunk of code and you're good to go. Next, if you want to get the source code of this video or support my channel, check out my Patreon page here. So what we're going to do is first of all, I'm going to scroll down here and just convert this into a line chart. Save this, refresh, there we are. And what we want to do is that every specific segment get a color based on a certain phase or a condition. So what I'm going to do here is what we're going to call here data structures. We're going to change this, make it a data structure. And then in here, we will have a few options. So let's put it in like that. I'm going to say your score. And the score would be basically the value, let's say 30. And then we have another one is the raw data or the date, which is basically the date itself. I'm just going to put in here 2023, 0501, and then put a comma here finally for the face. And the face, I'll say here letter A. And this would indicate that if it's face A, it will have, for example, a red color or green color, and face B, C, and see each of those have a independent color. So we're going to just put those in here. There we are, there we are. Put a comma here. All right, so what I'm going to do here, this will be 60, 60. I'll make this 90, and I'll make this 90 as well. And then here, we're going to say this will be B, and this will be B, and this one will be face C. So of course, for the dates, same story. I'm going to increment them step by step. All right, so if I save this, refresh, nothing happens here or it disappears. Why? Because we're using data structures now and these data stru structures are not being recognized. These labels here also can be removed. So I'm going to comment out this and I'll make sure that this is now being recognized as the labels on the X and Y scale. So I'm going to scroll down here and in the options, what I'm going to say here is parsing. And we're going to say here, we have these new specified X and Y key. So we're going to see the X axis key. And this key will be the date. So that's the raw date. Put it in here. Comma, and then the Y axis key. And this will be, well, let's look at it. We want to have the value, in this case, the score. So I'm going to put that in there as a string value. Save this, refresh, and as you can see, it works. However, this is not really a date. This is just now a string that is being recognized that this is a unique string, <coughs> sorry, string, but it must be converted into a date. To do this, we go to chart.js.org and we get the date adapter. Click on here on ecosystem. I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to hear the adapters. We have to get one of those. And I'm going to grab here the date FNS because it's very simple to add up. I'm going to scroll down here and copy the link that's this one here which is the bundle itself it's only one javascript file so i'm going to scroll up here and after the chart.js library we're going to make sure that this will load save it refresh and there we are all right so this works of course now we did this you can see here our x skill doesn't change yet why because we need to indicate that this is a date object so we're going to say yeah, the X scale. Then we're going to say your type will be time, comma, and then we're going to say here the time object. Then we're going to say here the unit, and the unit will be the day itself. Save this, refresh, and as you can see here now we get one till five May. So this works. Let's start to work on the color segments. So I'm going to scroll up here, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to work with a few colors. So uh, let's say here, what we want to do is first the border color. So I'm going to just comment this out. And once I comment this out, what I'm going to do here is, well, let's see what we need to do here. I'm going to say segment. And in this segment here, and if you're wondering what is the segment, the segment allows us to analyze between this point to here nicely. So we can color this individually. 
So that's a segment. So we're going to say here, in this segment, I'm going to give it a border color. And then I'm going to say here, CTX, because this is a callback functionality. For now, what I want to do is I just say here, CTX, and then console law. Next, I want to return, and the return value for now is just this red color. Save that, refresh. All right, it gives an error. So it gets here, border width. Let's see, what did I, what did I indicate it? Uh, all right, of course, I forgot a comma here. Make sure you have the comma, save, refresh. There we are. So as you can see here, we get the segment. You can see here the data set index. You can here see the data point starting, which is basically this one. Data point ending, which is one. So you can see here the P0 is a starting point. If I go in here, or if I select the other one, you can see here the P0 will be index three. That will be this one all the way to index four, which is the P1 or the point one. So these are just the coordinates of it. So what I want to do now is give it a color, but based on the face values that we have here. How do we do this? So we can open up here, we can see here the raw. And in the raw data, we can see here the face with the letter matching in everything basically here, but we only need this face here. So how do we do this then? So what we're going to do here is the following, I'm going to create here, very simple, console log, and let's get the CTX. Let's say dot. How do we get here? Well, if we hover over here, we should get a tooltip. Point or P0 dot raw dot face. P0 dot raw dot face. By doing this, if I refresh, we can see here now the matching letters. All right, so this works. So now what I want to do is just make a basic statement here. A condition when it will say your constant and let's say here a face colors and this face colors is an object where we can get here if we have a what I want to do is get the red color let's copy that and put that in there comma if it's a B I'll make it a yellow color which is the uh, third value here comma and then C and for the C we're going to get the fourth value which is a green color very simple and straightforward and all what I want to do here eventually is just getting whatever the face is let's grab that I'm going to remove this here and then we just say here a return the face colors and then put in here the array value and then the index number in here save that refresh and as you can see here the color is changing but if you look very carefully there's something here not desirable, which is the point radius or the, the point of this here, the point border color. So what we're going to do is we're going to add that up as well. However, for the point border color, we cannot copy this, put it in here and just say here point border color. No, we need to work independently here. So we're going to say here point border color. And if I would say here, for example, black, Show your comma save you will see here now we have these black circles all right so what i'm going to do and let's make this a bit more solid so you can easily spot them what we're going to do here now is basically change this item here so what i'm going to do here for the point border color we're going to make here a ctx basically callback functionality but it's outside of the segment very important if it's outside of the segment and then within here, we're going to start working on the same logic. I'm going to copy this, put it in there, make sure that this is all nicely organized or indented. And then what I'm going to say here, return, and basically you can just say here, face color return is the same item, except here, oh well, let me just show you this first, because I'm getting ahead of myself to console log. And just look at how do we get here the value because we don't have the same build up like this. And then here, open up the developer tab and then let's make sure that this console log here will be removed. So we only have the point board. And as you can see here, we're getting this multiple times. But what we need here is basically, if I scroll at the top here, we're going to look at the raw. And then within the raw here, we can get here the face. All right, so it's very straightforward. So we say here dot raw dot face. Let's copy that. 
put the array value in here, save that, and then refresh. And as you can see here, that works. All right, so final one is eventually for, what well, you can do here is for example, the inner border uh, or inner background color of the point. So the point background color. So what we're going to do is the same logic. And I guess we can even do it for the background color. Maybe that makes sense already. Just do it on here. And I'm just going to comment this out and just say here, background color, background color. Then we're going to say here, same story, callback functionality. This will be another CTX. Put a comma here, and then we're going to just copy the same logic. So we're going to say here, copy this, put it in there. And then we can probably grab this exact item as well. If I save this, refresh, and now we get an error. So what is happening here? And this is a very interesting one I'm going to show you. Let's do a console log here. Grab this, and then you'll see what's going on. Save, refresh. Uh, 101, oh, let me double check, 101, there we are. So the reason why this happens is it cannot get sometimes the value because it's loading an animation. So if I copy this, let's do this here, what do, what do we get? And as you can see here, when it loads, the first two loads properly, and then we get an undefined. And because of the undefined, we're getting an error. It blocks it and creates an error. And as you can see here, the color is just not working. So what can we do here? Basically, this is very nice. We can just put in this in here, but we're going to say a question mark. If there would be an existing raw with an existing face, show it. So if I refresh here now, you see undefined. And if it doesn't, you will see here now, we just give undefined or it will not do anything. It doesn't create a error anymore. And as you can see here, now, it is still slightly undefined, but the point background color, or the background color in this case, has been assigned nicely. And that's it.